now that we have the tool plate um, periphery laid out, we can take all these planes and create intersection lines. So we're going to create a sketch on this plane because that's the mating surface. That plane represents the bottom of the engineering part and the top of the tool plate. Once again, in your preferences, you must make sure your external references is turned on in the display tree. In fact, for our class, you should have all of these turned on. So, I'm going to select this plane and go into that sketch. Okay, so we go into the sketch and you don't have to, but you could go normal to view and flip this around like I showed you to get X, Y in the orientation we're accustomed to seeing. So here's your X and Y. But I think what's even more important at this level is to start learning to work in the isometric view. So we're going to change this. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's uh, go to view and change this. Where did it go? Change this to my isometric view. Because a lot of times when you're working with an assembly, it's a lot easier to see what you're working on in the isometric view. So again, this plane right here represents the bottom of this part and also the top of the tool plate. And I created all those planes, and these are the planes I want to use. Okay. So again, I'm in the sketch environment right now. I know that because in the top, it says Sketcher. In the workbench on the top left, 3D Experience Sketcher, I know I'm in the sketch environment, even though it uh, is in the isometric view. Now, what I did to make this simpler for me to see is I turned that grid off. So I'm going to turn the grid off, and I just turned that on by using my action pad. Okay, this icon right here is the grid that turns it on and off, and this is also down here in the uh, features on the bottom, turns your grid on and off. Again, I think it's a lot simpler to see the lines I'm creating with the grid off. So what I would want to do is you're going to take all of the station and buttock line planes. There's four of them. So the four that you see highlighted over here, that represents where the periphery of the tool plate is going to be. So I want to intersect those lines to the base plane here, or the plane that represents the top of the plate. So under the Sketch Tool tab, there will be a feature called Intersect. You may have to find it. Project 3D Element is the default, and I'm switching this over to the Intersect feature. So we're going to use intersect 3D elements and under intersect 3D elements it says elements to intersect it already had the four elements and that's why I highlighted them first. It's just easier for me to just have them already highlighted so it's in there and then the nearest element you're going to highlight the input field here in the pop-up window you're going to highlight that field and you're going to pick the waterline 30 I like to pick them off the tree because I don't want to grab this one in the published element. I want to make sure I'm grabbing this one here in the tool plate. Select on this and I select OK. And you see what it did is it created four intersection lines. And we do that same game that you learned earlier. We've got to trim this off. Now what you'll notice different is once I click off of the elements, they're no longer highlighted and you see yellow elements. If I change my background color maybe to a blue. Those yellow elements are a little more pronounced. The reason why they're yellow is because it's an external reference. It's linked. So if some of these things here change, in theory, everything else would follow. So these lines are actually linked to wherever the planes are. If the planes move, they should move. So if the engineering part plane moves 10 inches. This one here that's offset should move an additional 10 inches maintaining the 4 inch um, distance from the engineering part. So the next step is to create a closed profile. Let's analyze this.
Uh, it's not under constrained. I must have. It's not under constrained because I, everything in here is the yellow profile. So ignore that for now. These are all four isolated elements. Okay. Um, I hope that's okay. I'm going to close this off. And what I'm going to do here is under the sketch toolbar, there is a trim command. And we're going to trim the lines. You should be familiar with this. This is a little different from the wireframe because when I trim these two lines, it doesn't put this in a group and this in a group. It keeps these two lines separate. You'll notice that this became dotted, but these are solid. So the solid lines are what you're really keeping. I'm going to double click the trim command just to keep it on so I can quickly trim the rest of this up. I'm going to trim this line to this line over here. You must select what you want to keep. Uh, let's try that again. I'm going to double click the trim command and select this line and this line this line and this line. You should notice the dotted lines coming in. I'm going to select these two lines. Okay, so let's go back to sketch analysis. We have one closed profile now. I don't need to constrain it because it's already constrained. It's it's that yellow profile. Um, it's all linked to the actual planes. So in theory, if I move those planes, everything else should move. We will go ahead and exit out. There's that profile already highlighted. The question I have is, did I put it in the part body? No, I did not. So I'm going to minimize this for now. And I'm going to grab that sketch and drag it to the part body and reactivate it and go to 3D and change this to part design. I want to change it to part design because for the model, we're going to use a pad. It's going the wrong way. I'm going to inverse the direction. So there's your plate going in the opposite direction. I'll select OK. I'm going to go to properties and try and change the color. Um, sorry. Let's click the part body and change the color of the part body. So I can see contrast from the engineering part to the tool plate I just created. The salmon color part is the tool plate I created. The engineering part sits exactly on it. I'm going to check the engineering part by going to the very top. When I click the publish elements, it's to switch part design workbench up here to assembly. So now I'm in the assembly. I can hit update, make sure everything looks okay. So everything's still good. In the assembly design, We have a couple of things we could check. Let me try this create interference simulation. Uh, what I forgot to do though is I'm going to say between all components and select OK. There's no interferences detected. Um, again, I'm going to click on this one. Interference simulation. I'll select OK. Uh, there's no interference results. Okay. So what I know is that this thing here, the t engineering part and the tool plate, do not clash. There's no interference. Let's close this off. Okay, 
Um, again, under assembly, we have this interference check. Let me try this. Let me, uh, should have did this earlier. This is the tool, our engineering part, and this is the tool. I'm going to highlight those, and I'm going to run an interference check. And select OK. Okay, there's no interference. I was expecting to see a contact. I feel like I'm forgetting to turn something on. Oh, mm, no, there should be a check mark. I want it to make, I want to check for contact. So under specifications, add contact, and then we'll select OK. And the contact is the two parts telling me the locating jig that practice part and the tooling plate are contacting each other which is something you want to make sure of we want to make sure that that engineering part is actually sitting on the tool plate all right so so far so good we've got a tool plate that the engineering part can sit on. The next test will be to see if we can modify the engineering part.